All right, guys. So I told you that I'll do um, a video of how my interview went. So let's get it. I'm doing this on my iPad, by the way, because I stupidly left my laptop charger back at home. So clearly my laptop is dead. So this is the legal internship interview that I had. So I come through the door. She gets me to do a couple skills based questions. That part's irrelevant. She says she'll mark that later. So she was like, let's get into the interesting stuff. She's like, tell me about yourself. So I was telling her about myself and so far everything was going well. Like everything was going well. I was like, oh shit, like I was bullshitting like a month. I was like, yeah, I'm excited about law. I'm so interested. She was into it. And I was like, fuck, in my head, can, I was like, can I do this? Can I actually bullshit my way through this? No, mate, you can't. She said, let's get to your CV. I noticed that you don't have any pro bono work or any legal experience. Why is that? And in my head, I was just thinking, I'm just not passionate about this shit, so I have no motivation. I can't be asked. I ain't going to that crap. <laughs> but I didn't say that, clearly. Like, there's no valid reason that I could say that would make her think, all right, I understand. Like, she's, fuck, she's a fucking intelligent human being. She'll sniff me out in a second. So I just decided to tell the truth. I was like, um, not the truth, but I said, no, there's no reason. And then she was like, hmm. I could see her face. Her facial expressions start to change, by the way. She's like, huh. And what about law society events? You know, it's mandatory for your university to have events where you can attend, stuff like that. Why haven't you been to any? Again, the reason is I can't be bothered. Like, f allow that. Um, there's no reason. And then she's like, you know, this shows me that you're not dedicated to this. That's not good. In my head, at that second, I thought, game over, GG no re, it was, it was nice knowing you, let me just leave because this shit ain't gonna go well, right? And I was thinking, all right, time to go. Thank you for the opportunity, man's out. But before she ended the interview, I said, you know what, let me tell her the truth right quick. So I said, yeah, you're right. I'm not dedicated to this. Law doesn't interest me. Law doesn't excite me. And when she heard me say that, her whole vibe just changed. Her whole energy changed. Her facial expression was like that of a mad person. Like she was getting angry, it seemed like. She was like, you wasted four years of your life? Wasted is a little bit harsh. I prefer to say stalling. But she was like, you wasted four years of your life? And then she asked, who funded you? You know, when lawyers talk, if it feels like they're talking down on you, they have a certain gift, a certain talent of making you feel like shit. She's like, who funded you? I said, my mom. She said, how much? I was like, 10,000 pounds. And then she really got pissed. You wasted 10,000 pounds of your mom's money? By the way, ladies and gentlemen, let me just reiterate that I'm not rich, not by a stretch of the imagination. I told you in an earlier video, um, I'm full of shit video, which is still true, that my mom earns £20,000 a year. So she saved this £10,000 over a period of years and decided to use it for my masters. So she was like, you wasted £10,000 of your mom's money? You better pay her back. This is what she said to me. She said, you better pay her back. <laughs> I was like, yeah, don't worry about that. I will. And then she said, yeah, you talk the talk, but can you walk the walk? What? Whoa, there is no need to do that to me. But let me tell you something. When she said that, it's like my whole fucking aura just changed. It was like, I just fucking released the nine tails chakra. I was like, Naruto. It was like an adrenaline rush. Like, I just was like, yeah, I, I like this shit. This is the type of shit that I live for. Like, I like this back and forth right here. So this is what I said to her. She was like, yeah, you talk the talk. Can you walk the walk? By the way, this was a natural, instinctive reaction. I didn't think about this. I wasn't saying, yeah, I'm going to say this. It just came out. It was so intuitive. Like, I can't explain it. It's just so natural. I said, yeah, I like that chip on my shoulder. I'll see you at the finish line. What? You'll see who? Who says that in an interview? I said this to the interviewer interviewing me. Yeah, cool. I'll see you at the finish line. What kind of idiot? Are you an idiot? And her response was, oh, you won't be seeing me at the finish line. Boy, she was getting heated. And when she said that, something clicked in my mind. Like, as soon as she said, you won't be seeing me at the finish line, in that manner, I was like, fuck. 
And I learned something, which is everything anybody ever says about you is true until you prove them otherwise. Like, I ain't shit until I prove otherwise. Like, everything you say about me is correct. Like, Alex, you suck. Yes, you're correct. Alex, you're a waste, man. Yeah, you're correct. I'm like, shit. She's teaching me some real shit here. And I took that away from that. I thank her for that. Her name is Joy. Joy, I thank you for that. If you ever see this video, thank you for doing that. It was no longer an interview at this point, by the way. She was like really talking to me. It felt like I was talking to my relative. That's what it felt like. Like all professionalism just flew out the window. It was a real discussion. She said, let me have an honest discussion with you. I said, please. She said, I had it twice as hard as you. I'm black and a female. And I said, yeah, but nobody cares. This is what I said to her. Now let me tell you what I meant by that. It wasn't directed at her. It was as if I was talking to myself because before GV, which is before Gary Vaynerchuk, I had a mentality of woe is me, fucking cry every time shit goes bad, complaining, dwelling, like I wanted sympathy, I wanted someone to put their hand on my shoulder and say, there, there, Alex, everything will be okay. Like some bitch made shit. Then I watched a Gary Vaynerchuk video where he said, nobody gives a fuck about your feelings. And I just woke up. When I heard her say, I had it twice as hard, it took me back to the place I was. And it was as if I was talking to myself, like my current self telling my prior self, yeah, but nobody cares. She didn't take it that way, obviously, respect, because she shouldn't have. I didn't explain myself. So of course she would take it wrongly. Um, and she was like, uh-huh. I was pissing her off. And then she said, how old are you? I said, I'm 22. She said, you're 22? You still don't know what you want to do? And I was like, yeah, but I have time. She straight up looked at me and said, no, you don't. Whoa, she shattered that pretty quickly. She said, no, you don't. This is her words right now. She said, I thought I was invincible. I thought I would live till 70 until I got cancer. What? Shit was getting deep. When I heard that, I was like, oh shit, I couldn't say anything. In my head, I was just like, tell me more, tell me more. Like, fuck, like, what do you say to that? And she was implying that, yeah, everybody thinks that they have time. Everybody thinks that they're gonna live to this long age until something comes along and slaps them in the face. Now, while I understand that and I respect that and that's totally correct, I still can't espouse the mentality that life is short because usually when someone justifies life being short, they say, oh, you can die tomorrow. Like for example, you might get hit by a car tomorrow. Yeah, well, I might not get hit by a car tomorrow. Like why is the chance of me getting hit by a car greater than the chance of me not getting hit by a car? Like it's just heads and tails. You're going with the heads, I'm going with tails. So I don't think life is short. Life can be short and life can be long. But anyway, I was, I understood exactly what she was saying. So she was teaching me some valuable lessons and then she gave me advice. She said, you see this law thing? You don't need to be a solicitor. You don't need to work in a law firm. You can try other aspects. There's so many different things that law is incorporated in that you can try. And I said, yeah, you're right. She said, I know I'm right. And then she got a little bit petty, <laughs> right? Lawyers are just gifted at making you feel like an idiot. Like you can't fuck with a lawyer. Like she destroyed me. She was like, yeah, I know you don't like law by the way. Is that why your shirt's not ironed? I look at my shirt, I see a couple creases. <laughs> but that's what happened in the interview. Like, what seemed to be a bad interview turned out really valuable. But at one point it did feel like I was disrespecting her passion for law, her profession itself, and everybody who ever wanted to be a lawyer, but couldn't because like educational resources weren't there and funding. So she really, she made me feel guilty about not liking law. Anyway, that's, that's the way the interview went. I'll see you at the finish line. You, it, number one, she's already at the finish line, sipping on gin and juice, and you're still fucking sucking on breast milk, little boy. Um, arigato gozaimashita for watching this video. I had to go home and tell my mum. Every, everything I'm telling you in this video, I had to go home and tell my mum. Best believe Lucia Santi was not pleased in the slightest. She was fuming. She gave me a nice three-hour lecture and it took everything in her just not to get up and just slapping the shit out of me. Thank you, man, for not slapping the shit out of me. And that's it. So did they what? Before I leave, let me shout out Kasim. Me and him had some real game, real cloth talk. Thank you, Kasim. So did they what? And I'll see you at the finish line.
Fucking idiot. Fucking idiot.